Hey guys, Zero here, and today I'm playing Medieval for the PlayStation 1. Now, I'm going to put the game uh, in the actual tray in just a sec here, but uh, I'll have some intro stuff I want to get through, but if you want to skip all past that, I will put some timestamps down in the description so you can skip to where you want, whether it's the opening cutscene or to the actual first stage or whatnot. But anyways, so if all goes uh, according to plan, this will be my first set of videos for the month of October this year. I actually have some plans for a couple of different things I want to do this year, and this is one of them. I want to start off with this. Hopefully things will go well. Um, I have done some testing, so we'll see about that. But this is one of my favorite games from the PlayStation 1 era. I have a lot of favorites. This one's probably in... I'd say maybe the top five. Like, I've played this one several times. I played it a lot as a kid. And I want to say maybe the last time I played it was probably about two years ago because I actually wanted to do this for the month of October two years ago, as well as the previous year, or last year, rather. But at the time, I did not have the means to properly record it. I didn't have my Dazzle yet. I didn't even have my laptop, I don't think. Um, I tried doing some testing on my brother's computer with an emulator, but that didn't really work so well. There were frame rate issues, some of the graphics were glitched up, and I just I couldn't get it right, so I, I, I passed on it for then. But now I actually have the means to do it properly, so hopefully things will go well. But um, I think that's pretty much it, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the tray back in now. And the game's going to load up, and I'm going to be quiet for the opening cutscenes and whatnot. And I will be back once we actually reach the title screen. sorcerer named Zarok. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. So he raised an army of demons and set out to take the realm for his own. The king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia into battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude, how demons fell before him like wheat before the scythe, and how at last, though mortally wounded, he destroyed the sorcerer utterly. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galilee, and a time of peace began, which was to last for a hundred years.
Okay, so, so as you saw from the opening cinematic, uh, Zarok is back, and it is up to us to stop him once again. And where was I going with this? I suddenly had a lost my train of thought because it actually uh, moved forward when I expected it to stay on the menu. Actually, what does it load up right now? Oh, it's just going to load this back up again. Okay, skip that. Let's get back to the menu here. Okay. We will start a new game. So apparently history lied. We actually died from the first era of the battle. We are not the hero that everyone claims that we are. It has risen again. Sir Daniel Fortescue. See? The hero of Galomir who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the savior of the day. But we knows better. <laughs> Let it alone. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Zarok and live up to the legend. We hope it as well. I love how he can't really talk properly because he's missing his lower jaw. I just, I, I think that's one of the things that uh, adds to the charm of this game. Although I have to say, as a kid, I always thought when I looked at his outfit, his pants, they, they look like pajamas to me. I, I don't know why, it's just because they're all one solid color and I don't, it doesn't really look much like armor to me. But anyways, um... I will be letting all the, uh, the text go off like that. I'm going to let them um, actually just speak, so I won't be skipping past that just as an FYI. And I will try to read as many of these books as I possibly can, as long as I don't miss any. When you're ready to leave this crypt, you'll find an exit at the end of the hall. To unlock the gates, you must find a rune stone and place it in the ornate hand set next to the doorway. You must be out of shape after a hundred years lying on your back. Use the crypt to get to grips with your new lease of life. Yeah, this opening little stage here doesn't even have any enemies. It's very short, just to kind of get you uh, used to the game. So, we got our first weapon here, small sword, nothing special. You can uh, do basic attack. You can also jump attack, although I don't really use that too much. You can dash around, luckily. To do a power attack, press and hold square, but the square button on the controller for a second or two and then release it. So you can just press it once, kind of, for this one, it just, it's all around you, and you can charge it up. Kind of nice for getting everything off of you, uh, if, they're, if you're kind of surrounded, I suppose, but I don't use it too much. There's the star rune that it, uh, talked about. Feel free to have a paddle in the shallow water, but don't be tempted to go for a swim. Buoyancy can be a problem for those of a dead disposition. Disposition. So, this kind of shallow water we can go in. If it's too deep, though, we will die. It's the same as pretty much as a pit. Here we have some money. Any treasure that you find will go into your coin score displayed in the top right of your display. Coins are used to buy items for the greedy mer uh, merchant gargoyles. I'm not exactly that greedy. I mean, that's kind of helpful to actually have them there. You get a copper shield. You can see the number up there. It's 150. That's the durability. You will get some shields later that have more than that. But this is enough to just get us kind of started. Did I read this one? During your travels to the world of Galamir, you will collect many items. To look at your inventory, press the select button on the controller. I'll do that in just a sec here. Uh, this wall, keep this in mind. We will come back here shortly. We can't deal with this right now. There is a goodie hidden behind there. We can't get to it yet. This is the other kind of item we pretty much have. You pretty much have your melee ones and then your throwing ones. Here we have a set of throwing daggers. Actually, see, I can just throw that. And then the, the charge up is 
you unleash about, what was that, was that three of them right there? Yeah. It seems more like three, though, but... And this, this, you are definitely going to want to find these. The life bottles. This gives you another health bar, essentially. You can see we have 300 damage we can take. 300 HP, rather. I think you get, like, eight, nine balls, something like that, by the end of the game. You get a lot of bottles if you collect them all, and you're going to want them. Track down Zadok by tracing his diabolical odyssey through Galamir. You can spot the exits from an area by looking out for his stinking trail of magic slime. Well, speaking of the slime, you saw that that's what actually revived us, so it's actually kind of his fault that we're even back, because it was his trail of magic that brought us back to life along with the rest of the living dead now. And the other thing I, I meant to mention uh, in the opening that I got... I, I lost my train of thought was, as you saw, he also, he pretty much took the souls of all the villagers and all that, and we will have to deal with that later. So, what my plan is, pretty much I'm going to make one video for each stage. Granted, this one had a lot of intro video stuff, and this doesn't really count much of an actual stage, so I will move on to the next level for this first video, maybe a little bit longer than the rest of them, but that's fine. So, the actual first stage is the graveyard. But from here on out, the rest of them will be one stage per video, roughly, unless there's any other really short stages. I actually can't quite remember, but we'll figure that out as we go along the way. One of the other things I did not mention was you can control the camera somewhat. You can rotate it uh, if you're in an open enough area. You can rotate it one way or the other. If you actually hold both of the rotate buttons, you can kind of, I think they call it Dan Cam, where you can kind of look around just stationary. Don't really need it that much, especially when you know where you're going, but... Uh, there might actually be uh, one point where that's kind of useful. So the camera is a little finicky sometimes, but you can make it work. Welcome back to your beloved Galomir. The stinking dead have risen up to dance with the lifeless living, and they want to do it all over your dead body. That's terribly sexy. So this first stage is pretty much just littered with these guys here, these zombies. And as you can see, as I kill them, they're releasing... Well, I wouldn't necessarily say they're souls, but... Uh, well, I guess actually, no, it is. I think it's because what, you, what you're filling up is called the, I believe it's called the Chalice of Souls. There'll actually be a, a thing for it later, which we'll describe it more. We'll get to that in a bit. Here we get another Earth Ruin. Earth, Chaos, wh whatever it's called. Just pay attention to the colors, pretty much. You just, that's all you need to know. So I got a green key, essentially. I just need to look for the green lock. These, don't let zombies get you down. Tend those wounds by stepping into this fountain of rejuvenation. It didn't really take much damage there, so it filled up. I believe these can fill two whole life bottles worth. And those will be very important for replenishing your health when you kind of get screwed over in a stage. Because luckily, when you come back into a stage, um, they will refill. So they, they keep replenishing. So you can kind of come back if you're really low on health, you got a bunch of empty life bottles. This is a great stage to come back to to fill up because there's actually two of these fountains. Um, I want to say that there was actually another stage that had three fountains, but maybe I'm just remembering wrong. Maybe I was thinking that they were they refilled three bottles worth, but I'm pretty sure it's only two. Remember, nothing remains hidden under the gaze of an angel. That's a little hint here for this small puzzle right here. You can see here that it's currently facing down. That's why this gate is open. So if we hit it, we can actually rotate it. This gate will close, and this one will open. But we'll come back to this one in a bit. There's nothing over here. This direction, there is a gate. I do want to open it. So I want to go this way first. And you want to keep killing as many enemies as you can. You want to kill enough to fill up that chalice. Once it's filled up, you don't have to really kill anymore, I don't think. I don't think there's necessarily any benefit to it, because I don't recall the enemies having any kind of drops or anything like that. So kill until you fill that chalice, and then you can probably just run past everything for the most part, honestly. Get a chest of gold that's worth, what is that, 40, 50 gold? There you go, the chalice can now be collected, so once you get 100%, any more kills, it won't actually fill any further, so like I said, you don't have to keep killing anymore. Here are those uh, merchant gargoyles. You can see here, I can buy 50 throwing daggers for 40 gold. You can see the maximum, there's 250. I'm going to buy just a set, uh, an extra 50 for right now, but I should be fine with what I have. I don't really need them at the moment. The throwing items can be pretty handy against certain enemy types that you just don't want to get next to, or if they're just a real pain in the ass and they're running around, if they're small, um, they can be pretty handy. And what the nice thing about this game is there are a lot of weapons in this game. It's really, it's re as long as you're collecting all the chalices, which you want to do, honestly. There's like a chalice in pretty much every stage, I think. I hope if I rotate the camera the right way. I want to stay up on this upper edge here, so you can get behind this fence and get some extra gold. Now we will deal with this here. So let's reopen 
this pathway, and this should talk about the chalice. This object here is the chalice. Every time you dispatch an enemy, the chalice fulfills a little more. Once the chalice is full, it is yours to collect, and you'll be worthy of visiting the Sacred Hall of Heroes to claim a prize. This is a chalice to be found in every region of Galamir. They are all hidden or well guarded. Only a true hero will collect the full set. So here we go. Collect that. If you could, if you uh, try to grab it before it's full, it's just transparent. You just pass right through it. So you have to, you have to get 100% to be able to grab that. This door here, we can't go through right now. The living world lies beyond these skull gates. The master of the hilltop mausoleum, the stained glass demon, has possession of the skull key. So we actually have to come back here later. And that demon is actually the first boss that we will encounter. That won't be until two stages from now. And we're actually almost to the end of the stage. Again, just like Dan's Crypt, it's just kind of an intro stage to get you used to it. Like I said, it's also great for refilling your fountain. I remember as a kid, I had to do that a lot. When I replayed it two years ago, I didn't really have to do it at all. Maybe once, but I think it's just because, of course, being a lot older, I played a lot better. I also played a lot smarter, and that's what I'm going to try to do for this one. Because I was actually, I'm very, for a lot of games in general, I'm very stingy with my equipment. I try to save a lot of it, and I just use a lot of the lower stuff, and I just save the higher stuff just in case. But this one, I'll actually try to use up all the different various items so you can see how they all work and actually get some variety going. Tread softly. Zarek awaits beyond these gates. The master meets with the demon from the mausoleum, hatching plots of purest evil. Forgotten nobodies would be wise to make themselves scarce. You'll see that these gargoyles here, they really like to poke fun at you a lot. And they also refer to you as it a lot. Like, we hope it's we hopes it does well. I don't know. Just pretty much I'm gonna have to earn the respect of these guys at some point here, but alright, that's the end of this stage. But we did collect the chalice entirely, so we get to go to the Hall of Heroes. So I guess the game just refers to it as the Chalice. I refer to it as the Chalice of Souls, because, I mean, that's just kind of like what it is. You're just, it's like the souls of the enemies are flying out. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity, feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. If they think you're worthy enough, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. You don't get just weapons as well uh, from from here. I know you get a couple of other things. I know I get at least some life bottles. So it's not always a weapon, but it's always good stuff. To pay homage to the heroes, stand in front of their, their designated statues and await spiritual guidance. You actually see the uh, big chalice here in the middle table here, and we're just... You can, actually, you can actually hit it. It's actually solid. But anyways, we'll explore the rest of this a little bit later. Which is right now, you can see right here this chalice. You stand on it. Captain Fortescue, it's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? <laughs> How I wish I could fight at your side again, sir. But hold, you could take my crossbow. It's got rapid fire and it can ricochet the darts off walls to shoot around corners. I used it at the Battle of Galamir. After you were slain, I shot Zarek's champion, Lord Kardok. A clean kill through the eye at some thousand yards. <laughs> I like how impatient you are. Get on with it. Just give me my stuff. If you say no, it just closes the prompt and you just have to stand back on it and they'll just repeat the same thing. So there's no point in saying no. Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. <laughs> oh. Goodbye, sir. I always like this first interaction. Watch it, you. So here we get the crossbow. Like I said, it's rapid fire. Um, definitely preferable over the knives, just in terms of laziness, because you can just hold down the trigger. But um, right now, we'll switch back to our sword. And actually, one other thing. You can use your arm. <laughs> you can use your arm as a weapon, and I believe you can throw it. They pretty much had to give you a way to make sure you always had a weapon you could use, as well as a throwing weapon. Although it's very weak, but it is there. So let's actually uh, put our arm back on. And uh, I, I think if you talk to him, he does just the same message, maybe. But that's it for now. So let's leave the Hall of Heroes. And we will pretty much be done for this first part here.
And as you uh, com clear stages, you will un un uh, you will reveal more of the map. I will save my progress here. Card one. Yes. I thought it would prompt me on where I wanted to save it. Isn't it supposed to prompt me on which slot in one to save on? There you go. I guess by default it just chooses the the, f the first one if it's blank, so. Um, like I said. And you can see here, uh, sometimes there will be a few different branching ways, maybe like one or two different ways where you can kind of choose which stage to go to first. Although I think there probably is a preferred order, or at least the optimal route, so. I should try to stick to that. You can see here, now that I completed the graveyard, it has the chalice with a check mark to let you know that I have gotten it. I believe for Dan's Crypt, it does not show one because there is not one. And like, and that wall, we will come back to a little bit later. But we're going to cut this one here. So in the next video, we will start off with Cemetery Hill. So I'll see you guys then.